Today we're talking about emergencies, a word that seems to be losing its meaning faster than literal, which is literally the worst thing ever. We might soon be declaring a state of emergency on our southern border because apparently after a year Trump found the governance cheat codes. Wait, if I just type in the word emergency it unlocks god mode? And every time I text print to Mnuchin I get 10 billion dollars? Well, this should help me beat Sim Nation. Now today I want to talk about why the government has been shut down for 3 weeks and we still haven't just decided to use emergency power to build this wall. In fact, why not come out and declare it today, right now even? Specifically, I want to look at the legal issues associated with Trump's potential declaration of emergency. But first, why is it a benefit to declare a national emergency? You don't need congressional approval to build the no, wall. No, we can use them. Absolutely, we can call a national emergency because of the security of our country. Absolutely. No, we can do it. I haven't done it. I may do it. I may do it. Okay, so the goal is to get this wall built without Congress. Simple enough. It's no surprise you wouldn't want to work with them either because if they moved any slower, they'd be erasing laws. I want to emphasize that the goal of declaring national emergency is to avoid working with Congress because in trying to avoid working with Congress, you put two challenges in your way that I want to break down today. In a discussion about executive rights during a state of emergency on Fox News, this happened. Question, can the president spend money that the Congress hasn't authorized? He cannot. Can the president build a fence or a wall or a doghouse on private property without exercising eminent domain authorized by the Congress? Answer, no. That might be a problem considering that the first two questions I'm guessing a contractor asks a client are where and I'm getting paid for this, right? Well, I look forward to seeing how Trump's legal department can talk his way out of this one. First, if you want to build a wall, you're going to need to get land to build it on. Brilliant insight, right? Now that sounds simple on paper, but would require seizing private land from approximately 5,000 different landowners, which takes years in court and generally participation by Congress, the people we're trying to avoid. We'll get to congressional exceptions in a bit. Two thirds of Texas border wall development land is privately owned, and there's already a wall on some of the other third. But hey, we can build one third of all, all right? So why not declare an emergency and seize private property using that emergency power? I mean, emergency power automatically gives the president unlimited power, right? If only there was a Supreme Court case about a president who declared a national emergency and then tried to use that to justify seizing private property. Hey, President Truman, can you help me out with this one? In Washington. President Truman declares a state of national emergency. The American people have always met danger with courage and determination. I am confident we will do that now. And with God's help, we shall keep our freedom. In 1950, President Truman, one of those middle presidents whose main legacy is being the answers you got wrong on your US history final, declared a national emergency. He was referring to the start of the Korean War and he was going to fight for American freedom and against communism by seizing control of all American steel plants. Well, that sounds counterproductive. The big problem was, at the same time the Korean War was ramping up, In America, steel is the backbone of business, and so the steel strike has affected pretty well every industry. Things got so bad that President Truman intervened, but still no settlement was reached. And by golly, we needed steel for weapons. So seize the means of production from the companies and bring in employees on the government's payroll to ensure a steady flow of steel. Which definitely doesn't sound like a passage straight out of the Communist Manifesto. This led to the Supreme Court case of Youngstown Sheet and Tube Co. vs. Sawyer. Steel companies said that the order was unconstitutional because you need to go to Congress to seize private property. While Truman's administration's defense was, it's a national emergency, and all of this is implied in the Constitution, and we'll figure it out later. Well, the justices said that, unless based on specific authority from the Constitution or Congress, seizures of private property by the executive branch are invalid. And even in a time of national emergency, the president doesn't get to inherit inherent powers beyond those that should be found in the Constitution or are granted by Congress. Now, that might sound like a game over, as stated by some legal scholars. The emergency power that Truman attempted to use 
did a couple things. It seized private property against the owners, and it spent government money to pay those who were on strike or to replace the strikers. So the Supreme Court struck it down for two reasons. Only Congress can seize property when it pays for it, and only Congress can authorize the expenditure of money. And President Truman didn't have the authority to do either. Sounds pretty open and shut to me. Without being able to seize private land, a wall in the Texas border is going to have more holes than Swiss cheese. So what's the solution? Well, Trump would say, use the military to seize private property without congressional approval. Which sounds uncontroversial? So what happens is some are paid up front. You make a deal up front, and we're willing to do that in all cases. And when they're unwilling to make a deal, which also happens, then you go to court. But in the meantime, we're able to build the border security. Under the military version of eminent domain, and under actually Homeland Security, we can do it before we even start. So, that's Donald Trump saying he's going to use a military version of eminent domain that's going to allow him to build a wall before the government even acquires your land. I check my legal textbooks on that one. Well, your property value went down considerably considering there's now a huge wall going through it. I'll give you half of our original offer. If I was in Texas, I would be pissed. But I'm in New York and thankfully those Canucks aren't coming over the border to take our jobs. Congress has delegated the ability to seize land to several branches of the military, including the Army Corps of Engineers, to build things like the Truman Dam. Which, wow, way to name a dam built on seized land after a president who notoriously failed to seize private property. So sounds like we found a way to quickly acquire land without congressional approval, use the commander-in-chief to command the military to get it. Which solves a major problem because, not to sound like a broken record, but two thirds of the Texas border wall development sites are privately owned. Of course, the legal obstacle here goes back to that Truman decision. Because the decision specifically states of seizing land, this is a job for the nation's lawmakers, not for its military authorities. So you can look forward to that quote getting analyzed to hell in the coming Supreme Court cases. Until then, using the military would be a major obstacle avoided in avoiding working with Congress. What was that other obstacle again? Can the president take money budgeted in column A and move it to column B where B is not budgeted? Answer, no. Question, can the president spend money that the Congress hasn't authorized? He cannot. Where is he going to get this money? Unfortunately, just because it's an emergency doesn't mean you get to defy congressional budgeting. The White House has identified two places they could legally take money from to fund this wall, both from the Pentagon. The first is a fund containing less than $1 billion that was allocated for curtailing drug shipments. And the other, with $22 billion, was designated to financing projects across the country. That $22 billion pot has already been fully designated to projects though, so dipping into it to avoid working with Congress, well, that's just adding insult to injury. Now this brings us back to the question I asked at the top of this episode. Why not declare a national emergency right now and just get this thing built? If he did... What happened to the caravan? Where did it go? Well, they're now being housed in Mexico and being processed orderly into the United States. So has the emergency abated? These are the and types of... the number of, of illegal crossings is down to a six, seven year low right now. Right. So, so you can't make that argument. The right? president's going to have to address these tonight because if he does declare an emergency, you know it'll be challenged immediately and the courts will force the Department of Justice lawyers who are representing him to address then this. They... If he did, it would probably get stopped by the Justice Department before the first piece of concrete dried. It took a district court two days to file an injunction and stop President Truman from nationalizing the steel industry in the most communist, anti-communist move I can imagine. Furthermore, if he did declare an emergency, it wouldn't really open up that many new doors considering a lack of funding and land. Now, I would look forward to covering a Supreme Court case over using the military to seize private citizens' land without congressional approval. But most people think that won't happen. You could really get the ball rolling on a construction process, but you're not building a wall based on emergency powers, despite this idea that declaring a state of emergency is just the silver bullet to end bureaucracy. Land and money might be the two most crucial components to any construction process. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that.
Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.